Is the press the enemy of the people? No, that's extremely hyperbolic. The press is supposed to be the fourth estate protecting us from corruption. Unfortunately, as we learned, thanks to Project Veritas, in reality, many of the big news outlets will kill a story to protect the elites. And that goes for everyone. But let me tell you another bit of reality. People don't like journalists. Like, I'm sorry, man. Okay, depending on your neighborhood, for sure. But I got some tweets pulled up from this woman named Paige Peroso. She was filming B-roll. This is kind of, it's, it's filler, right? It's not the main segment. She was just getting some shots of this neighborhood. And she was attacked by some woman who came up, yelled at her, and then hit her. And that is wrong, and it shouldn't happen. And journalists face this stuff a lot. But I tell you this, man, there are a lot of reasons why people do not like journalists. And it's not just Donald Trump. Now, Trump focuses on the fake news, that they write this misleading information, and they play this political game. And I know it. I've seen it. Yep, they do it. But there's something else. Imagine you live in a crime-ridden neighborhood. Imagine, actually, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's ignore the crime neighborhood. Let's say your house is on fire, literally, not completely engulfed, but you are fighting to put those flames out. All of a sudden, a bunch of people run into your home while you're, while you're splashing water and they start just circling around you, taking pictures and filming. You get really angry. What are you people doing? Why are you filming this? My house is on fire. Not everybody gets angry. Some people are like, yeah, 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 stay out of my way. But for a lot of people who live in these communities, these people come and take photos of you and they don't care that you're struggling. And, and there's a mentality of, shouldn't you be helping? You're not. You're coming to make a spectacle out of our pain. So no, Donald Trump is not creating this problem. This problem has existed for a long time. And that's why they call journalists, well, one of the reasons, they call them vultures. They swoop in and pick at the carcass of your home, of your family, of your friends, and they turn it into a show. When the ABC News story leaked, and we saw Amy Roback saying, oh man, I had this story. You know what I heard? I didn't hear a journalist saying the good of the people was, was undermined. I heard a journalist saying that could have been me on the TV talking about my story. That's what it's about. So maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to impugn the honor of Amy Roback, but let's do this. I want to read you this story from this woman about how she was attacked. And I want to talk about how, how people don't like journalists and why. And I, I will stress, nobody should ever attack anybody for any reason. But, but I want to explain this. So let's, let's read the story. So she starts with a tweet showing the video. You can actually see a woman come up and smack her in the face. That's horrifying. You should not do that. She says that we're your neighbors. We all call the same place home and work towards the same goals to make our community a better place. But I think she probably doesn't realize, maybe she lives in this neighborhood. I don't know. But people take their, their, their small you know, neighborhoods very seriously. She writes, she, write, uh, she, she starts off by saying that she's a multimedia journalist. She says, I, I interview, shoot, write, and edit every part of my story and then run my own live shot at the end of the day. I usually choose to embrace the challenge of working solo, but safety is an ongoing con uh, conversation in the MMJ world. Usually we're alone at crime scenes and wherever else a story might bring us. I'd say a majority of MMJs are young women, and sadly, all of this makes us vulnerable. Cue to the video. She says, this woman verbally and then physically attacked me for just doing my job. I tried to diffuse, diffuse the situation by deleting the clips she might have been in. She was walking on a public street. But it was obvious she it was it was obviously she hated me for just being in the neighborhood with a camera. Mind you, I wasn't filming an actual crime scene. I was just getting generic video of the street to use as filler. What first started as hateful language toward me turned into a physical attack after I thought she had already left. I'm okay, thankfully. But I know the situation could have been worse. Also, I'm thankful for my managers at WBTV who dropped everything to make sure I was okay and then let me lay low at work as I was still in shock this even happened. She says, uh, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not sure exactly the point of this post other than to remind other journalists to be careful. And for those outside the biz, your local journalists aren't the enemy. We're your neighbors. We all call the same place home. And, 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 and we saw that statement from her already. But I'll tell you this. It's not about being enemies. It's about being vultures. And that's, and that's the sad, sad reality. Now, now, I will say, for one, this is very different from Antifa. I accuse all the leftists being like, what about when we say don't film us? Hold on, hold your horses. Yeah, Antifa hates you. They hate journalists. We get it. They'll attack you. Yep, you shouldn't. Same as this woman who attacked this journalist. She hates you. She shouldn't attack you, period. But let me, let me tell you something. First, I can empathize 
with, with this woman being angry. I cannot with her attacking somebody. You want to insult somebody, fine. You want to physically attack them? No way. Antifa is engaging in public protest in a newsworthy event, and they are the actors who are newsworthy, who are going out. You have no right to stop a journalist from documenting your actions. There's a big difference between protesters descending on a neighborhood and getting angry at journalists filming them because they're breaking the law and you going to someone else's neighborhood and the locals telling you enough. Now, sometimes there can be an overlap that I understand. But here's the thing. I understand how a lot of these people feel when you look at, say, Ferguson. You know, these people were angry. And then all of a sudden, when these Ferguson riots erupted, you had journalists showing up to network. I kid you not. There were journalists there not filming or anything. And they were just like, I'm here networking. Yeah, there's so many journalists here. It's a great meeting opportunity. Oh, there's CNN. I'll I'll go talk to them. Hand them my business card. It was business. These people want the clicks. They want the views. They want the fame. They want the story. They don't care about your community. And the locals know that. They know that when their, you know, uh, neighbor's kid is gunned down in senseless violence, that the vultures who show up to take pictures just want that sensational view. I'll give you another example. There's a famous photo of, there's a photo of a young woman who lost her life. But that's not what's famous. What's famous is a different photo from a different angle where you can see the swarm of journalists surrounding this, this body taking pictures. And the contrast between what life really looked like and the photo they took was dramatically different. And it's why they don't like journalists. Now, the journalists want to blame Trump. They say Trump's pushing this rhetoric that's getting us hurt, getting us in trouble. Nope, not true. Trump rags on you guys. And yeah, people boo and give you the middle finger. But please, what the, the, the struggle and the violence faced by journalists has more to do with the fact that people are not members of the community and they're coming into film. Now, let me stop right there. I've done this. I've parachuted into foreign countries. I do not believe even if you're angry that we're there, you have a right to attack us. I can understand why you're angry. In my opinion, I'll do my best to mitigate that. You know, I'm not going to try and get in your face. I don't film people without their permission. I try to make sure I'm, res- I'm respectful, especially when you're in Chicago, because, man, you go to a Chicago neighborhood after a crime and you better make sure you're being respectful to people. But too many journalists play it like a game that you're, 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 you're no different than a cog in a machine for someone working at a factory. You're just another prop for them to, to use to get those clicks, to frame, to tell a story or a narrative that will sell. Fox News did this thing once where they filmed the back end of a protest and then that's all they showed. And, and, and you have to wonder why they would do that. I'm not, I'm, I, I can't accuse them, but I'll say this. It made, it, look, it made the protest look very, very small. And so with the narrative they're getting across that no one really cares about this stuff, it was interesting they chose to film the back end with stragglers instead of the mass in the front. It's another reason why people don't like journalists. And what I find really funny about the whole blaming of Trump for all of this is how back in 2011, all these activists on the left didn't care for the press to the point where they created their own media. It was, it was notorious. The, the occupied Wall Street Journal, for instance, they made their own newspaper. I was, I was uh, uh, um, given uh, special credit for my work doing live streaming because we went around the mainstream media. Now, for some reason, many of these activists on the left defend the media. And even stranger still, the, the intelligence agencies that don't like Trump. So let, let, me, let me give you an honorable mention. This is, uh, <laughs> this is just weird. Journalist Glenn Greenwald attacked by Brazilian columnist on air. Glenn Greenwald is a journalist. And he's not the kind of guy who goes on the ground like this woman does. So the anger he faces is more in line with a political. Like when people say Donald Trump is, is riling up this anger. I don't think we've actually seen people like Acosta or anybody else actually get hurt. But the local journalists actually face serious risks and people like Andy No have been hurt. So here's the, here's the point, right? I, I wanted to highlight this because Glenn Greenwald gets up and gets in the guy's face and gets like a swing at him. And that's uh, gutsy to say the least. Don't do this. Don't let it get to this point, right? We know that this woman got attacked. We know that journalists got attacked. We know Andy No has been attacked by Antifa. But this, a sit-down interview in a radio station, is where we got to be really, really careful. Now, they, they're, they're speaking Portuguese. I don't know what the context is for the most part. But this dude did start the fight with Glenn. We got to make sure that doesn't happen here. They want to they wanna blame Trump for everything. They want to claim Trump is riling up all this fear-mongering of the press. What's really happening? Journalists on the ground covering Antifa are being attacked. 
local journalists are being attacked. It's not coming from Trump and his supporters. That's why it's very important. Everybody say like, you know, when it comes to these, the, the, this kind of reporting in politics, it cannot cross that line. Not, not because of Trump, because it, it shouldn't cross the line with Antifa in the first place. But this is where it's, look, man, political journalism, people sitting in chairs talking about it, that's a step too far. But let me give you the, the, the main point of this video, because I, I do want to make sure I keep this short. Journalists have been attacked forever. It, it, it'll happen today. It happened yesterday. It'll happen tomorrow. Andy No was attacked. Do they come out and say, oh, no, Antifa? No, they don't. They say Trump. Trump's doing it. But it's Antifa who's actually harming the journalists. And it's local people getting into fights with journalists. It's not Trump and his supporters. But for some reason, and this is what's crazy to me, you'd think the journalists would rally around other journalists being attacked. And now for the paradox. This story about this woman being attacked in this clip, it's getting a lot of play because journalists are supporting her. But there was not a unanimous, there was not unanimous support of Andy No when he was attacked. In fact, people smeared him and claimed he was provoking it. That to me was insane. You can see how the partisan nature of, of, of journalism today is changing things. So anyway, long story short, journalists get attacked, man. People do not want you in their neighborhoods. It's a fact, and it's existed well before Trump ever said anything. And Antifa is actively attacking people. So the media, for some reason, is running cover for those who would attack their own. Don't ask me why, but it happens. I'll leave it there. I got a couple more segments coming up in a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.